with girls. There are walls. It's just there's no doors. So, and the walls aren't very long. It's just like a stall, um, a stall, a stall, a stall, a stall with no doors. And then there's the lady. She watches you pee. She'll watch you pee because she doesn't want you switching cups with uh, somebody else. This is a drug test. Um, they drug test you. It's multiple. It's just like a urine test. They're going to see if you're pregnant or not. And if you are, obviously, you're disqualified from MEPS. So you um, pee in a cup, and the lady's like, don't, don't let anybody else like hold on to your pee, which it sounds really gross, but this is a lady. She's telling you, like, for your own benefit, you don't want to let go because she said there's been instances in the past where people have tried to, like, swap out like other people's urine and there's no way to prove it unless you have like your sticker which at MEPS whenever you go check in at the second floor they'll give you like a whole page of stickers with your name and your like number and all that on it and so there's multiple things that you have to like put your sticker on and that labels things as you're going through the day so you put your sticker on your cup and you hold it um, until you go push it through a window which is just like it's just if you've never done it before, which was my first time to ever go to MEPS, so it was just weird. It was awkward. It's not something you do every day. So you're going to be a little bit uncomfortable, but you're going to live. Um, by the way, which this is before before you do all this, like, urine test, you're asked to change into, like, this blue, um, like, gown thing, like a hospital gown. And you put it on, and it's <laughs> the most unattractive thing ever. But whatever. Nobody else is going to see you. You have nobody else to impress, so it doesn't matter. Um, that's the part where you're supposed to wear underwear and their correct bra or else people are going to see everything and they don't want to see that. So just wear the right stuff. Um, you change into that and, and you do the pee test. They weigh you and then you have to do like the duck walk and you have to move your arms like, you know, do full range mo motion kind of thing. The army or the military does not want um, you know, products that are damaged. So they're going to make sure that there's nothing wrong with you. Um, so you go through that. That was probably the part where I didn't get as much information as I wanted on it. Um, because my recruiters are guys. I'm not going to be, like, making conversation with them about, like, what happens whenever you're doing all that. Um, they didn't give you, like, a pap smear or anything. Like, I didn't get that. Um, they do kind of like check you out like they, they give you a breast exam they don't do that in front of everybody else they take you to that other room I was telling you about and they give you a breast exam they um, go through all that with you and then after that like basically the hard part is done they do take blood from you that, that's before you get into that room so it's just like a simple blood test they take a little vial from you so not a big deal I'm like the worst person with blood and I made it so I'm sure you can make it um, after that, you go and you sit down in the same place where you were uh, watching TV after your test. We're in that same lobby. And they then tell you, okay, like, you, you're, you can go downstairs to your office. And so you go downstairs to lunch. They do have lunch. It's not very good. It's a sandwich. It's either, like, ham and cheese, turkey and cheese, or roast beef. And... For some reason, I was so tired that day. I would never have made this choice had I not been so tired, I guess. I don't know, but I chose roast beef. Don't get it. Wasn't that great. Definitely recommend ham or turkey trying that because the roast beef was not good. So um, you eat lunch because you're starving, you're hungry, you're tired. And after that, you go um, to your counselor, which they will assign you. There's like probably 10 counselors per um, branch. So I got my counselor, we sat down and we were talking, and, and before I'd gone to MEPS, I'd researched jobs that my recruiter had given me, and um, I was pretty much set on what I wanted to do whenever I went to base, when I went to MEPS, and um, I chose Intel, which is 35 Fox, and that, the, my recruiter was like, it may not come up, so don't get your heart set on one job because if it doesn't come up, like, I don't want you to be upset. 
So I kind of just like, oh, this is really what I want, but I know I'm not going to get my heart set on it because I'll be so upset if I don't get it. So I sat down with my counselor, and what do you know, 35 Fox came up, and I was so excited. I was like, that's what I want, that's what I want. So then after that, um, with Intel, you know, you you obviously have to score um, well on your ASVAB, and you can't have anything um, on your record. You, um, you have to qualify for the job. So you go through steps of qualifying for the job, and so yeah. That's what I chose, and after you get your job, you uh, go to your fingerprints, and they take your fingerprints, you sign the contract, and then um, then all that's left is basically your swear-in. So you're waiting there, because they do groups of swear-ins. Some people are shipping that day, so you might be doing a swear-in with somebody who's leaving for basic. And families are allowed to come, but if this is your first swear-in, if, if you're at MEPS, you're going to be swearing in like a couple more times. So... If you want your family to come, you can. If not, I didn't have my family there. I was, I kind of just want them there whenever I ship for basic because that's the one that really counts. So um, you'll have people there shipping that day, and you'll be also there, of course, swearing in. So you go to this briefing room where they tell you, like, give you the rundown, like, of the military. This is what you're doing. They make sure that you haven't, like, falsely... Um, said anything on your record and that your contract is right. Then you go swear in and come back and they get you to sign again another contract. And basically it's I think it's an electronic signature unless your Air Force. Air Force doesn't do it electronically. They um, do the whole like hand signature thing. Um, so yeah, that was my day at MEPS. It was really, really tiring. I was really tired after that. It was so nice to see, like, my recruiter because, you know, you're around strangers all day long, and it's, you're up at 3.15 in the morning, and you're going through all that. It's it's intense, and, uh, yeah. <sighs> okay, so that's MEPS, and I have 67 more days till I ship, and I cannot be more excited, and I will definitely keep you guys updated.